Welcome to the Ultralight Airplane Workshop. My name is Leon. You've found part three of a video series on making mold for the rudder of the UWS-1 Ultralight Airplane. In part one of this series, we talked about the plan for how we were going to make the mold. In part two, we talked about making some extensions for the rudder plug. Now underneath here is the rudder plug. Now it wasn't quite long enough to do what I wanted to do, which is to have flanges for my mold around the ends. So I made some rudder plug extensions, and that's what we talked about in part two. The other nice thing about doing those extensions is I experimented with some more techniques that were about the same as the way I made the plug. So making the extensions, I learned a little bit more. So next time I make a plug, I can hopefully do a little bit better. Now this video is going to take up where part two left off. At the end of part two, I'd already started working on part three. And part three was at the stage where I had made the cradle that was going to hold the plug in place so I could lay up the mold over the plug. Well, I'm going to go back now and we're going to talk about the steps I used to make the cradle and put it together. At the end of this video, what we should have is a plug that's ready to lay up a skin for the rudder of the UWS-1 ultralight airplane. But I'm recording this at this stage here where we haven't taken this off yet, so it's possible it's going to stick and I'll end up tearing the darn thing up and I'll have to start over again. Well, let's find out. I wanted to give you an idea of what we were working toward when you view the next few video clips. And this is what we're working toward, at least it partially there. We got more to do after this. Now, as you can see, this is the old plug that I made for the rudder for the UWS-1 ultralight airplane. I'm really glad I have this now because I can use it to do test fitting on this fixture without scratching up my good plug. This is the partially completed text fixture for making a skin mold. And what we want to do is have flanges all the way around our plug. When we lay down the fiberglass for our mold, it'll go from flange to flange and from plug extension to plug extension. For example, this big plug extension would go on here and attach to this end of the plug. Now you may recognize this from part two, although this is unfinished. I have to be making part two and part three at the same time, so I haven't quite finished this plug here as I'm in the middle of doing part three. So we're in the middle of part two also. But as you can see, the mold will come along this flange, then up over this plug, and then along this flange. Here's the rudder plug, and you've probably saw in previous videos where we had made this plug and sanded it and polished it. This plug already had three coats of free coat sealer on it. Now it's time to put some release agent on it. Now I have some really old free coat 700 NC release agent, and by really old I mean it's probably well I've had it for two years and it's supposed to have a nine month shelf life, so it's a little bit past its shelf life. But I thought, you know, let's go ahead and give this a try and see if it works. That would kind of give me an idea of just how reliable that shelf life is. I ended up putting three coats on and waiting a half hour in between coats. And for each coat, I use a different hand direction in applying it. Now this first one, you see me moving to my left and right. In the second coat, I chose a diagonal direction. Now I could have gone fore and aft, away from me and toward me. It didn't really matter. And then for the third coat, I chose a 90 degree diagonal, 90 degrees from the first diagonal. I had noticed before that after applying several coats of the sealer, when I run my hand over it, it wasn't completely smooth. There was just very slight texture to it. So as an experiment, what I decided to do is to just take a dry cloth and rub it over there, kind of buff it, and see if I could reduce that slight texture. And that seemed to work fairly well. Now with this side of the plug prepped, I flipped it over and did the same exact same the other side. I applied those three coats of mold release, and then I buffed it down to make sure I got rid of any of that texture. Well, that rudder plug isn't terribly stable. It's got a rounded surface, and if I were trying to just lay fiberglass over to make a mold, it would rock around too much, and I probably couldn't make good flanges on it. I had several options on how to hold that plug still 
and put flanges around it. Now one option of course would have been to try to retrieve the foam that I'd used and cutting out the core of the plug and just reuse that and set the plug in there and use the foam as a cradle. And I think that probably would work. But I wanted the plug to kind of rest at an angle so that the nose was kind of tilted up. That way when I flipped it over the mold would be kind of tilted down. Nose would be down and that means that the overlap area down near the nose would be a little bit easier to get into with my hands and put carbon fiber in there and foam in there. I'd actually be able to see it instead of having to lean down and look up into it. Well in order to do that I decided to make a little cradle, a fixture to hold the plug in the position that I wanted. In order to do that I thought well let's kind of use the idea that we used in making the templates for the plug. I would go into a CAD program and draw out the cradle that I wanted and then cut it into some slices. I chose four slices, one at each end, so the top of the plug, the bottom of the plug, and then two equidistant in the middle. I knew the plug was fairly stiff already and I might have been able to get away with just one at each end, but I decided to support it in the middle just to give it just a little more support, a little less likelihood that it's going to flex as I'm laying down the fiberglass for the mold. So just like with the templates, I printed out using a laser printer on 8.5 by 11 sheets, which means I had to go through and kind of stitch them together and tape them together into the right size. And you can't really see it very well here, but I have measurement marks that I measured after I got everything taped together to make sure it's still the right dimensions. When I was cutting out these templates, I just cut them out to, oh, within a sixteenth of an inch of the line, actually even farther away in some places. It didn't really matter as long as it didn't go up to the line. After I got the four cut out, I wanted to adhere these sheets down to either plywood or hardboard. And just like I've done with previous templates, I use a 3M general purpose spray adhesive on the back of the paper, spray it on there, give it a moment to dry just a little bit till it's tacky, then flip them over and stick them to the hardboard. And just like with other templates, after this adhesive has had a chance to set, I cut out the templates using a bandsaw, and then send them down using the sanding wheel. I was able to save a little bit of time when I was cutting out and sanding these rib templates for the fixture. I didn't need to have to cut all these edges precisely. For example, nothing was going to be attached to this end out here or this little edge right here. I didn't need to do anything with those. Again, up here in this area, I wasn't going to do anything. I did want to have this area where the plug was going to sit to be nice and smooth. And I wanted it to be fairly smooth, fairly straight where I was going to have those plastic flanges setting. So I was able to save a little bit of time when I was cutting and sanding these. And another little trick that I just thought of when I was trying to sand this little concave area I've had this little sanding block for years and years and years and I realized that if I could use this curved surface here I could sand this with that curved surface. Wouldn't have to go to Home Depot and buy a little sanding drum. So I flipped the sandpaper around over the curved edge and by golly that worked really good. So I was able to get here and sand this very nicely. So my next step is going to be to hot glue these ribs in place and I want to make sure they're back against these little stops that I've already hot glued in here so I'll have them keyed and registered in the right spot. Once I get that done I'll start putting these little stringers in here. I'll glue those in. This one will be about inch back from the front edge of where this plastic strip will be and then another one back about this far where I'll end up putting a little bit of pressure as I'm putting epoxy on that fiberglass. I want to have that supported there. And I'll do that all along this back edge and out here on the ends to help support the plug extensions. And I'll do the same thing up here on the front. I'll put one up here near this edge at the top and another one down where I'll be putting pressure when I'm trying to put epoxy on that fiberglass. For these cradle ribs, I only need just a little bit of hot glue to hold them in place, just to keep them from sliding around. I've already got some verticals in here running orthogonal or 90 degrees to these ribs to help hold the ribs upright. 
As I said before, I'm going to stick some stringers along here along the trailing edge, and these first stringers are going to be right underneath the trailing edge where the plug is going to rest, because there's going to be a little bit of pressure there where I'm sticking in some plasticine between the trailing edge of the plug and this plastic sheet that I'm going to use for my flange. I then follow that with the stringer that's just a little bit further back, and that again is to help support that plastic flange so it won't be bending too much as I'm squeegeeing out epoxy on the fiberglass on the flange. And I end up repeating the same procedure on the front. I'll put a stringer right underneath where this plastic flange is going to meet up with the bottom of the plug because I'm going to end up putting a bead of plasticine in there and then rounding it out a little bit and that's going to require a little bit of pressure on any stringer to support that and then again just a little bit below that I'll put in another stringer and the same thing for the aft stringer on the on the trailing edge side and that's just to help to support this plastic just a little bit as I'm squeegeeing out epoxy on the fiberglass as I'm putting it down on this flange. I might have been able to get away with having this plastic flange material be kind of loose. It wasn't really loose. It fit in the groove that I made for it fairly tightly, fairly snugly. But I wanted to hot glue it down. So I put hot glue along the top of the stringers and along the ribs and pressed the plastic flange material down into it. Unfortunately, this hot glue is very difficult to do a long, large area with because it cools down so fast. You might be able to get some of it pressed down, but then it starts cooling down too fast and it starts getting firm and you can't get it pressed down into all of the hot glue. So I ended up doing this in bays. In other words, the areas between the ribs. So I did the first bay, then I did the second bay, and then I did the third bay. And that worked out pretty well. I noticed when I tried test fitting the rudder plug on this cradle, that it did not want to stay up on the cradle. And that makes sense because it's inclined a little bit. The nose is pretty high relative to the trailing edge. I was trying to think of what I could do to kind of hold it up in place. And I thought, well, let's try some Play-Doh. So I put Play-Doh on here at the front and rear of each one of these ribs. So I thought that would help cradle it, kind of give something soft for the plug to rest on, and that Play-Doh may be sticky enough to hold that rudder in place. Well, it was not sticky enough. In fact, it just slid right down. That mold release on that plug works really well. So that didn't work. Okay. The next thing was try to use a little plasticine to put a little curved area between the plug and the plastic flange up here near the nose so that the mold will have a nice little curve there. When I lay in the carbon fiber, I won't create any voids due to the carbon fiber being too stiff to be able to make a sharp 90 degree turn. Having a little radius in here of all, oh, let's say three eighths of an inch radius, that thin carbon fiber I'm using will be able to make that curve nice and easily. I won't get any voids. I did quite a bit of experimenting along this edge and you're looking at kind of the first experiments that I did. I tried to use my finger to make the radius. I really did not like the curvature or the consistency I got. I also have this nice little roller and I tried to use it and it actually worked pretty good. You had to press it in there quite a bit, but once you press it in enough and you work it down into that clay, you end up getting a thin little line and you can kind of see this white line here on the plastic flange and I get a little dark gray line there along the plug. So that's actually kind of nice. Then I come back with this little plastic scraper and I scrape off the excess plasticine here on the flange up to where that white line is and I can get rid of the excess. And that's the way I handled most of the plasticine here along this radius along the leading edge. Again, I used my fingers to press this plasticine down along the trailing edge of the plug and then I used a little white scraper again to remove excess plasticine that was up on the plug. I then came back and angled that scraper a little bit and I scraped a ramp for my plastic flange up to that edge of the trailing edge on the plug. And that made a nice little ramp for the carbon fiber to go from the plug down to the flange. And then I scraped off the excess plasticine down on the white flange material. I did not capture any video of it but I then cut a little notch into this white scraper because I really didn't want a ramp. 
from that plug down to the white flange. I wanted about half of that trailing edge, that back flat edge of the plug to be in my mold. So I wanted to remove just a little more plasticine right at that trailing edge of the plug. So I cut a little notch in that plastic scraper where part of that notch would rest up on that very edge of the plug and then I would run it along there and remove just a little more plasticine. And I was really happy with the way it looked. Now the question would be, would I be able to get my plug out of the mold after doing that? Now neither my plug or the plug extension were perfectly flat on their ends, particularly where I have them mated. And so I need to put a little bit of plasticine down in this crack because I didn't want epoxy to run down in there and glue my plug extension to my plug. But I didn't want it to be perfectly straight and level across that crack. I wanted just a little bit of an edge in there that would show up in my mold so that when I made my part, that edge would show up in my part and I would know exactly where I needed to trim my part to. After doing all the plasticine work on the mold and the flanges, there was quite a bit of plasticine residue around and I wanted to get rid of that just to make sure I didn't have any blemishes in my mold that I didn't really need. I used denature alcohol and some rags to wipe off all that residue. That worked pretty well. I wanted to put four layers of 320 gram per square meter fiberglass plain weave cloth on here for the surface of the mold. But I wanted to know how big to cut it so I'm making a template using some craft paper. Now this is actually craft paper that I was using as packing in some supplies they had received. And I saved it and rolled it up on a cardboard tube that I received some fiberglass on. That kind of helped flatten it out. I just marked out the correct size using a marker and then cut it out. And then I had a template to cut out my fiberglass cloth. Now that I have my lovely template, I lay it down on top of my 320 gram per square meter cloth that I'm going to use for the surface of the mold. I'm going to use four layers of this fiberglass cloth. I was just kind of taking a guess at how much I needed. I now think I should have done more, probably six layers, at least for the size of the mold that I'm using, in order to get the rigidity that I want. Then I just cut it out and I do that four times. Since I'm going to be laying up rib stiffeners and a stand on top of this surface of the mold, the outside surface, I need to be able to mechanically bond some fiberglass tabbing to the outside of this mold surface. So I'm going to put some peel ply on here that I can then peel off and have a nice rough surface that, I can, that epoxy will be able to adhere to. And I'm cutting this just a little bit larger than I did the fiberglass. What that'll do for me is when I lay down this peel ply, it'll keep little fingers and fibers of that fiberglass from sticking up and poking me later after it's cured. This peel ply will make it nice and flat. I did not know if this white flange material would stick to the epoxy. I do now, but at the time I didn't know. I hadn't done a test. So I decided to put some of this release coat on this white flange material and I didn't know how well this plasticine would stick to epoxy. I don't think it sticks at all now, but at the time I didn't know. Again, I probably should have done some testing. So I decided to wipe the plasticine with some of the sealer also. At the time I was thinking to myself, I gotta make sure I don't reuse this plasticine since it has a sealer on it. I don't know what it's gonna do to it. So I wanted to remind myself to throw this away at the end, not to put it back into my plasticine box. Well, here's a little tour of what it looks like at this point. So I've got lots of plasticine on here around just about every edge and on the ends in that little gap between the plug and the plug extension. And right here at the very end, you can see how I kept the plug from slipping down. I've got a piece of wood hot glued to the end and then down to my baseboard that everything's mounted on. And here's the nose of the plasticine underneath. At this point, my plug's pretty much ready to use. It's time to start putting some fiberglass on here and make a mold. And then we come to the other end, and again, I hot glued a piece of wood on there and then down to my base to keep that plug from moving around. Well, here comes the moment I've been waiting for for, wow, hours to hours, days to days now. I'm finally getting ready to put a gel coat on my plug. I decided to do a little experiment here. 
Instead of using a polyester gel coat, I decided to try to make one out of epoxy. Now there are a couple of reasons I've decided to use epoxy instead of polyester. Number one is I don't like how much polyester shrinks. Epoxy shrinks much less. And I'm going to try to do some things with this plug that if the polyester shrinks, my plug could actually get stuck in the mold. And I'm more likely to be able to release it if I use epoxy. In other words, I'm not going to have draft set like you would normally have recommended. The other thing is the shop that I'm working in is attached to my house and polyester stinks or smells a lot, significantly more than the epoxy does. And I want my wife to be happy with what I'm doing, so epoxy it is. I found this high impact epoxy from Composite and Visions I wanted to give a try. It could be that being high impact, it's going to cause a little bit of trouble if I ever need to put a gloss on it. In other words, to polish it or to use a high grit number like 1500 or a 3000 wet and dry sandpaper on it. It may not take a gloss very well. I just don't know. It's one of the things I'm going to have to try to find out. I also want to make this gel coat have a color to it. So I picked green. And again, I got this from Composite and Visions. Green kind of matches the channel color, so that seems appropriate. I wanted this epoxy gel coat to be fairly thick. It's going to be on some vertical surfaces and I want to make sure it doesn't run. And I want it to go on thick. That should help it stick a little bit better to my plug and hopefully prevent some pinholes. For thickener, I'm using Cabo Seal. And again, I got this from Composite Envisions. And I put enough Cabo Seal in until the consistency of my gel coat was like peanut butter, pretty thick. Using a stir stick to transfer the gel coat from my cup over to the plug probably wasn't the best idea. I should have found a 2 inch wide flexible spatula to do it. At least I used my wide yellow plastic squeegee to spread it around. What I was trying to do here is put it on thick or more importantly I was trying to avoid any thin spots. I did a reasonably good job although when we pulled the mold off you can see I did get a few thin spots. The next thing to do was put on my first layer of fiberglass. In this case, it was a chop matte veil. The goal of using this veil was to try to reduce print through of my succeeding layers of somewhat heavy fiberglass. I was trying to keep that weave of the fiberglass from showing through to the surface of my mold. I don't yet know if that worked. I need to do a little more work on the surface of the mold to find out if it was really sufficient or not. I should have waited a little bit longer before I put this down. I waited a little while to let my gel coat start to firm up. I don't think I waited long enough. I was just too anxious to start getting this fiberglass on and, and seeing what I could make out of this. And the reason I'm fairly certain I didn't wait long enough is I had more epoxy soak up through this veil than I had anticipated. I didn't really expect much to soak through and I got quite a bit soaking through. Well, next comes four layers of this 320 gram per square meter fiberglass. It's e-glass. Now at this point, I'm just kind of guessing on how many layers of this fiberglass I need. I don't know how stiff this four layers is going to be. I'd like for it to be stiff enough that I could just take these what, five layers if you include the chopped mat. I'd like for it to be stiff enough that I could take it off the plug and it would pretty much hold its shape. I'm not confident of that at this point, so I end up putting some rib stiffeners in, which we'll see a little bit later. Well, here's a little tour of what the mold looks like now with the chop mat layer down first, the four 320 gram per square meter fiberglass layers, and the peel ply on the top. I'm fairly certain that the flanges of my mold will release from the flange material underneath here, that white plastic. I have a problem similar to the one I have here on the plug extensions is that the very edge of this white material, this flange material, doesn't have mold release. Epoxy ran over that edge and I think some of the little fibers will be glued to the edge, but that should be fairly easy to break loose. By the way, here on these extensions, I don't care if they get damaged and broken off, that's fine. I really care about being able to retrieve the mold. My first cut of this video was 50 minutes long and that's really too long. What I'm going to do then is cut this video up into two parts. That means this part, part three, will end right here 
and then part four will pick up right where this left off and it'll be out very quick.